Death Stranding 2. Whoa, you guys, what a phenomenal trailer. We expected nothing less from the genius that is Hideo Kojima, and of course, Kojima Productions. There is so much going on here, and everything looks so stunning in terms of visuals, storytelling, soundtrack, you name it. We actually expected to see Death Stranding 2 at the Game Awards, since we also made the video a couple of days before it was announced, talking about 10 things we'd like to see in the game, and Kojima Productions delivered big time. The trailer we got was brilliant, and judging by what we saw, it looks like we'll be stepping into yet another unforgettable journey, one which could very well be an even deeper experience than the original. Before we begin, be sure to subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. You're watching Python Salkin. According to Kojima Productions, DS2 is still a working title for this Death Stranding sequel, so we should be getting an additional title that'll best describe the game in the near future. Any guesses on what this might be? Let us know in the comments. Now many of you have been asking us, what the hell did we just see in this trailer? <laughs> That's pretty much the first thing everyone says with every new Hideo Kojima trailer, isn't it? But don't you worry guys, we've got you covered. As we always do, we're here to analyze every frame of the trailer and tell you all about what we found. So without further ado, commencing Python Selkin's analysis now. The trailer opens up with a scene showing a wooden baby toy. We've got some dolphins here, reminiscent of the ones featured in Death Stranding, a partially damaged sticker that reads I love BB, the same which is also found on Kojima's badass looking suit at the Game Awards. Should we also analyze that suit? Maybe later on, stay tuned. Okay, moving on. Here we can see what appears to be part of a UCA sticker, behind an exclamation mark. Here we can also see what appears to be the word Bridges, which also matches the font that the word is written by. Bridges was a company of great importance in the first Death Stranding game, one which Sam was a part of, and which was formed to reconnect the fractured society of the United Cities of America, which is basically what the first game is about. Take the Cupid West, Sam, and reconnect the people of our great nation. Now, unless Bridges started manufacturing baby toys, this logo could imply that these toys are being developed in a similar fashion to some of the items that were developed in the first Death Stranding game, sort of in an advanced 3D printing manner. In such a post-apocalyptic state, one cannot just buy toys and necessities for these children from any other shop. The fact that these toys are being developed by Bridges shows that the world is still far from being rebuilt and that future generations need help to survive in this post-apocalyptic world, possibly serving as symbolism for the future of mankind. Today we come together to celebrate the birth of a new nation. A new nation for a new world. Next we have some more toys, and here we can see a toy of a cargo truck, known as the Cicada MC2000 in the first Death Stranding. There's what appears to be a crab shape over here, and as you surely know, we've seen a number of them in Death Stranding. Here we have some baby handprints, on what is probably used to measure the height of a baby, with of course emphasis on the number 2, further hinting at the identity of the game, in case someone did not recognize the whistling of BB's team throughout the opening moments. This here appears to be a part of a cryptobiote plush, of which we can see another in a later scene, and which very much resembles the ones from the official merchandise of Kojima Productions. In this shot we can see a statue that is probably used to worship someone, possibly serving as the insignia for some kind of cult or organization. We can also have a better look at this in one of Kojima's recent tweets here. 
Another of these statues can be seen on this coffin, or sarcophagus of sorts, that these people are carrying. We can also see what appears to be the black liquid known as tar coming out of it. Tar is a liquid that is related to the world of the dead, known as the beach, and it being seen coming out of the sarcophagus can mean that this dead person, whoever it is, could have been beached already, or might have already been some kind of BT entity, in a similar fashion to Cliff Unger, who had tar liquid all over his body following his death. In one of his recent tweets, Kojima posted pictures of an artwork that seems to show Amelie herself behind this statue. If the statue is indeed meant to represent Amelie, then this particular organization or cult could potentially be worshipping the extinction entity as some kind of goddess. Their team of red outfits can also be reminiscent of Amelie's red dress. These people seem to be traveling in a desert environment in what appears to be an otherworldly location. Now I must say this scene looks amazing in terms of visuals, scale and overall intrigue. And I don't know about you guys but this desertish landscape surely reminds us of the movie Dune. And we're very excited to see such new locations in the world of Death Stranding. It's still too early to tell whether this place is of another dimension, planet or anything since post-apocalyptic places can still look out of this world, and the ordinary world in Death Stranding is quite advanced, so they still might have these futuristic looking structures. Here we can also see some light rays that seem to resemble the northern lights, which could suggest this might still be the ordinary world, but again, you never know. What we can say is that the structure looks huge, and judging by its appearance, it could be serving as some sort of gateway to another side, in Death Stranding's ancient times, it is believed that people moved freely between the Earth, outer space and the world of the dead, and that constructions like the pyramids in Egypt, Mesoamerica and the Stonehenge were all gateways that were specifically built to access the beach. Could we be seeing something similar here? Moving on. I will hold you. The baby Sean is wearing an apron with the name Louise on it. Louise is of course the name Sam gives his BB in the first Death Stranding game. Louise. The same name he and his late wife were going to give their unborn child, so we can pretty much say this is baby Lou from the first game, a bit more grown up. And we finally see Fragile, who seems to have had a change of heart in her opinion of babysitting. Hmm. You mind? Babysitting sucks. Now the first thing that comes to mind upon seeing Fragile is her skin. As we've seen in the original Death Stranding, Fragile's skin was deteriorated after she saved an entire city by running through timefall rain in her underwear in order to get rid of a nuke that Higgs was purposely delivering. Unless this is some kind of dream or separate reality, how fragile has her skin all healed up is still a mystery at this early stage. However, one important thing we should point out are the cryptobiotes that she enjoys eating throughout the first game. A cryptobiote a day keeps the time fall away. According to Fragile herself, ingesting a cryptobiote a day would oppose the effects of time fall on a person. Now of course, assuming it's even possible in the world of Death Stranding, it would take some work to completely reverse the aging brought on her by Timefall. But when it comes to the healing of the skin itself, these small life forms are known to replenish certain amounts of a person's blood, and we don't really know the extent of their healing abilities after being ingested for years. A particular variant of these cryptobiotes, called decryptobiotes, was also discovered, and these kind of cryptobiotes are known to highly affect the hematic regeneration levels of the person who consumes them. So who knows, maybe eating all these cryptobiotes did pay off for Fragile after all. Fragile. What? Do you have anything to eat? Oh. Louise is also shown wearing cute little wings, which may have some importance in a later scene. 
This Dreamcatcher appears to be the same one Sam had in the first game, which was gifted to him by Amelie. You can also see what could be a record player, similar to Hartman's, in the blurred background. As well as a little rainbow effect here. The roof of the room they are in seems to be a projection similar to the technology featured in the VR aspect of Death Stranding, giving Louise a more realistic feeling of the world, with an artificial blue sky. What could be Lou's old BB pod now appears to have been turned into an aquarium for cryptobiotes. Here we have a pizza advert on some magazine, and speaking of pizza, Remember those mails we used to receive about pizza deliveries in the first game, by someone called Peter Englert, also known as Higgs Monaghan? Hmm. Here we've got a Ludens duck, which is also a part of the Kojima Productions merchandise, and a thumbs up icon on one of the books in the background. A different circular dream catcher can be seen hanging on the ceiling, with some stars next to it. A cryptobiote plush over here, some stickers of animals and numerous stars. The room is of course insulated, given its isolated nature. We can also see the yellow baby harness, which fragile wears right before they escape. And here we can see a little heart symbol on the arm of baby Lou herself. Now as soon as Fragile prepares to escape with Louise, the transitions between some of the clips start showing the blinking of a baby's eyes. This was also shown in some of the trailers of the first game, and in scenes that featured a baby's perspective in the game itself. Similar to games like The Last of Us or Crisis 3, plants and such nature becoming one with buildings are meant to depict a post-apocalyptic setting, which is meant to show that civilization has pretty much fallen. This is also something we saw in the first game. A surveillance camera over here, and Fragile is forced to take a different path after she sees the enemies heading towards them with what are probably gun flashlights. The panel she uses to activate this cargo elevator looks quite similar to the ones found in Bridges facilities, and considering the baby toy we've seen earlier with the Bridges logo on it, this could be some kind of an isolated safe house, possibly supplied by Bridges. Close your tired eyes and I'll wait. As soon as the elevator closes, we can catch a quick glimpse of the enemy at the back, who seems to be wearing red clothing. As Fragile goes up the elevator, we can actually see tears in her eyes. We're only shown a quick glimpse of this, so we have to pause the scene at the exact moment to actually notice it. The two possibilities here are, either the enemies chasing them contain high levels of Kyrelium, such as the entities from the other side, and since Fragile is a sufferer of dooms, this could be leading her to a chiral allergy. I think they're gone. <laughs> what the hell? Didn't mean to grab you so hard. Tears. A chiral allergy. So, you have dooms, like me. Or Fragile just feels saddened that the only moment of joy she had was taken away from her. Moving on. Fragile and Louise exit the safe house, and one thing we should really note is that, with Fragile's Doom's level being higher than Sam's, she once had the ability to warp herself, or better yet, jump to other locations by moving through her beach, even with other people. An ability which could have been extremely useful in this situation. Now she might have not been able to use this ability for the fact that she wasn't wearing her suit, or for not having her umbrella which she actually used as a navigation device during her beach travels. 
and even though time was of the essence, it's still rather interesting why she wouldn't have her suit and umbrella handy for these situations. Unless she gave up her abilities in exchange for her skin regeneration, hoping for a new life. Food for thought. During this part of the trailer, we can hear the same voice who is singing this version of BB's team, Troy Baker, who plays the villainous Higgs, saying these particular words before continuing to sing. BB, don't worry, it's okay. I'll always be with you. These exact words were spoken by Cliff Unger, Sam's father, right before dying, as we've seen in the first Death Stranding game. Now the fact that Higgs is singing BB's theme raises plenty of questions by itself, since this is a lullaby that Cliff sang to baby Sam. But the fact that Higgs is now quoting Cliff, word by word, strongly suggests that he may have knowledge or may even have seen the flashbacks which Sam experienced in the first game. Which means he may now know the truth about Sam being the first experimental bridge baby, the truth about Amelie's connection to Sam, as well as the truth about Die Hard Man, who is the new president of the United Cities of America. Fragile and Louise escape on an advanced unicycle of sorts, which appears to hold the cargo storage here, potentially being one of the new vehicles in the game itself. If you watch the trailer in 4K, as Fragile turns the unicycle, you can actually spot a Drawbridge logo here, Drawbridge being the new organization which Fragile seems to be a part of, one we'll talk about later on in this video. Having said that, is it just the vehicle that comes from Drawbridge? or even the safe house itself. And considering we saw a Bridges logo on that baby toy, could Bridges and Drawbridge be working together in some form? Moving on. Once Fragile is shot and falls off the unicycle with Louise, someone wearing a cloak aims a handgun with a red color. But we don't really know who or what his target truly is, as of yet. Despite the color of his cloak not being shown clearly due to the blurring of the scene, if we amplify the color of the image, we can see that whoever he is might be wearing what seems to be a red cloak. The emphasis on this color could imply a connection to the organization, or cult, that we've already seen during the opening moments of the trailer, who are all seen wearing red. We can also see a black strap on his outfit, similar to some of the black straps found on these guys' red outfits. Now considering that we're hearing Troy Baker's voice throughout the sequence, it's highly possible that this might be Higgs himself, or at least someone working for him. As the gun is about to be fired, we're shown another baby in a typical repatriation sequence, this time with Tar coming out of its closed eyes, but it doesn't really give us a thumbs up. The scene right after shows us Fragile with the same black liquid coming out of her eyes, which happens to match the black liquid scene on the baby's eyes just before. Was Fragile shot, or perhaps even shot dead? These particular sequences are normally shown when someone is killed and is about to return back to life, similar to this scene here, showing one of Sam's deaths. We'll pick this up when you're done dying. Hit! I'll see you on the beach for the grand finale. When Fragile is shown again, the entire area is engulfed in flames, which means that some time had passed since she crashed with the unicycle to when this scene is actually happening. 
Unless, of course, Fragile ended up being beached, similar to how Cliff Unger was beached after his death in his restless search for BB, which could explain the black liquid coming out of Fragile's eyes, very much like the black liquid that came out of Cliff's eyes following his death. Could Fragile perhaps be a patriot, like Sam and Higgs? As an injured Fragile moves towards Louise, we can see Louise soon stops moving, with Fragile losing consciousness soon after. The fact that Higgs is heard telling Bibi not to worry, and that he'll always be with her, seems to imply that Higgs, or whoever was after Fragile, might actually be kidnapping Louise. This could explain how Higgs might be accessing Sam's old memories, since Sam was actually experiencing his memories through his connection to Bibi. In fact, back then, Sam thought they were Lou's memories when they were actually his own. Thanks for everything. The BB pod shown here appears to be the same one which was holding the cryptobiotes as a sort of aquarium during the trailer's opening moments, as we can see from some of the decorations that were inside of it. And while the pod appears to be open, it doesn't necessarily look damaged. What's interesting is that the cryptobiotes seem to have changed into a spiky shape, and also have a different color from the regular ones that were inside of it. A dark looking baby entity appears inside of the pod, one which even seems to have Louise's wings, implying a connection of sorts with Baby Lou. When it comes to appearance, this entity is somewhat reminiscent of a BT, not to mention its wings giving it a little demon vibes to it. The fact that Louise was wearing wings, and this dark looking entity has wings too, kind of teases an angels and demons scenario, a benevolent being, and perhaps a malevolent spiritual form that is potentially connected to the world of the dead, and which might both be intertwined across an alternate reality, otherwise known as the multiverse. I'm sure you've heard the term multiverse. Given the similarities between Louise and this entity, it's highly likely that Louise might still have a connection to her pod, as we'll also be seeing in a later scene. It's also interesting to note that instead of the pod's normal yellowish glow, as seen in the first game, the pod now seems to be emitting a red glow instead, which is the color that Higgs's portable tank used to glow. Could Higgs have truly taken Louise in his possession? Baby. Next, we see the logo for Drawbridge, a new organization which is described by the words Boat Stick and Rope, to protect and connect, together for tomorrow. This description seems to imply that Fragile's organization is maintaining the goal of connection, even if it means fighting their way to get there. Stick was the first tool mankind ever created, and is meant to keep bad things away, whilst the rope is meant to keep good things close to you, thus symbolizing connection. This was pretty much the theme of the first game, and it's great to see it will be further emphasized in the sequel. As Sam is seen climbing the stairs from the shadows, a mysterious character is heard talking to someone. Now just because we're hearing this character talk to someone, doesn't necessarily mean he's talking to Sam, but the fact that Sam is shown during this character's dialogue could serve as an indication that he is indeed talking to him. This character says that no one should have to suffer such loss, that he understands how the other person feels, and warns him that sadness can weigh him down like an anchor, if he holds on to it. If this character is truly talking to Sam, then the sadness he talks about can be portrayed in a variety of ways. Is he referring to Louise possibly being kidnapped by Higgs? Could something have happened to Fragile while Sam wasn't there to help them? Or could this be a reference to the loss of Sam's wife, Lucy? who committed suicide whilst being pregnant with Sam's child, triggering a void out that obliterated an entire town, with Sam being the only survivor due to being a repatriate, an event which Sam could never forget throughout the first game. The time full fast forwards whatever it touches, but it can't wash everything away. The past just won't let go. 
here we have a quick glimpse at the rainbow effect, as well as a sound that is heard upon its appearance, probably to go along with the cool effect. And we can finally see the man himself, Sam Porter Bridges. And we're pretty sure the first question that came up in everyone's mind was, why is Sam looking older? Was that a time jump? Perhaps to show Louise all grown up? It's certainly plausible, but then again, in that scene, Fragile doesn't look much older than she was in the trailer's opening moments, where Louise is still a baby. But if there wasn't a time jump involved, how could Sam be looking older than he was in the first game? Something very interesting we should mention is that due to the timeless nature of the beach, Amelie's car, her soul so to speak, did not age, which is why she kept looking young compared to others. And in all that time, she hasn't aged a day. He knows why. My body's still on the beach. I don't get to grow older. Due to the fact that he was brought back to life by her, Sam gained a special connection with Amelie, granting him repatriation powers and in turn becoming a sufferer of dooms with which Sam would experience nightmares and also end up stranded on the beach, not knowing a way out. Here, it's a dream catcher. You're free, but we're still connected. Don't tell me we're not. Even though Higgs gained his dooms unknowingly by his own, he was also given new abilities upon meeting Emily, who connected Higgs to her in some shape or form. In fact, at the end of his battle with Sam, Amelie seems to take away his abilities, potentially removing his connection to her in favor of Sam. Jimmy Peller, damn it! We can even see his hair appearing grayer towards the end of the battle, when compared to the brownish color he had, which could be the result of Amelie slowly removing the connection between them, resulting in Higgs losing his powers and his aging catching up to him. Those of us with dooms, her, we're all bound here for a reason. By completing the chiral network, Sam unknowingly connected people's beaches to Amelie's beach. Amelie explains that in order to hold off the last stranding, Sam had to cut Amelie and her beach loose from the world, which also meant removing his connection to her. But if you cut me and my beach loose, perhaps you can stop it from spreading. You might just prevent the last stranding, which is why we must sever our connection. Sam's connection with Amelie might have slowed his aging process when compared to other people, but once that connection is gone, it's highly possible that Sam would start growing at a faster rate, since his lost years would eventually catch up to him. In fact, Dead Man specifically mentions the term accelerated aging as Sam returns from the beach after a month, following his final meeting with Amelie, even though Dead Man thought it wasn't going to affect Sam at the time. We looked for a month with absolutely nothing to show for it. A month on the outside. How long on the inside? Trust me when I tell you, you don't want to know. But don't worry, we found no signs of accelerated aging. Spending an entire month in a beach on the outside means Sam could have spent many long years on the inside. And with his connection to Amelie being severed, Sam could now be experiencing some of the consequences of not having her on his side any longer. You been daydreaming, Sam? Thumbs were only down for a second. No, it was much longer than that. You know, I meant it when I said I understand how you feel. But if you hold on to the sadness, it'll weigh you down like an anchor. As the scene shows us what Sam is looking at, we see a mysterious object that seems to be submerged in the black liquid. An object that is surveilling the area, which is quite reminiscent of a submarine's periscope. Sam is soon greeted by a giant floating ship rising from the black liquid itself, with a number of gazers also seen falling from the ship and back into the black liquid. Mysterious sounds are heard as the ship continues to rise, sounds that kinda remind us of the tripods from one of the worlds. A 
Upon closer inspection, the ship appears to be called DHV Magellan. Meet the shadowy future without fear and conquer the unknown. Ferdinand Magellan was a Portuguese explorer who had organized a Spanish expedition to the East Indies from 1519 to 1522, becoming the first European to cross the Pacific Ocean and resulting in the first circumnavigation of the world, a journey that changed the world forever, being called the greatest sea voyage ever undertaken and the most significant. Magellan was actually already featured in Sony's Uncharted movie, which we also happened to analyze in one of our previous videos. The fact that the ship came out of the black liquid strongly implies that DHV Magellan might even be capable of traveling to beaches, similar to how Fragile traveled between beaches in the first game, or perhaps even the seam, the purgatory state between the world of the living and the beach. The ship's name being purposely chosen as Magellan further hints that we might be traveling to other lands beyond America, and the premise behind this definitely sounds promising. On a related note, NASA also had a spacecraft by the name of Magellan, which managed to map the entire surface of Venus, making several discoveries about the planet, thus becoming one of the most successful deep space missions. And whilst that stranding contains certain elements of outer space, this particular NASA spacecraft was still named after the Portuguese explorer, so we think Kojima's Magellan ship was indeed named with the explorer in mind. Here we can see the logo for drawbridge, the one for DHV Magellan, and appearing briefly, since it's much smaller, is the one for APAC, here. All three logos are found on one ship. Now if we look at this image, which Kojima officially tweeted, we can see these three logos next to each other, describing APAC as an automated public assistance company, Drawbridge as an fragile organization, and of course the Magellan, being the ship itself. The Magellan looks quite armed, as we can see with these two heavy machine gun turrets over here. This actually goes in line with the description for drawbridge, that of having both stick and rope, with the ship's journey to other places being the equivalent of the rope connection, and of course the stick being represented by these weapons that are used to keep bad things away. Here we can see the words Lorne Romer on what appears to be a large crane of sorts that is used to lift heavy cargo. It also reminds us of the railgun from Metal Gear Rex, and the ship's overall appearance kind of looks like a flying Metal Gear of sorts. Here we also get a sneak peek at who could be the pilot of the ship. On a side note, could this ship actually be upgradable, such as adding more weapons and armor, or perhaps some kind of energy shields, sort of like upgrading the Jackdaw in Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but with a different kind of ship. That can be a very cool gameplay feature. Having said that, the Magellan is definitely an awesome addition to the world of Death Stranding, and we can't wait to see it operate in the final game. Fragile is once again seen with tears on her face, and so is Sam, possibly due to the two of them being so close to the gazers. The blue attachment that Fragile is wearing here looks very much like the skeleton arms from the Fragile Express logo that she used in the first game. And by looking closer, we can actually see that she is equipped with a BB pod, similar to the one Sam had in the first game. Now, what's interesting about this is that Fragile didn't really need to connect to a BB in the first game, since her Doom's level was higher than Sam's, which allowed her to see BTs on her own, as well as to teleport to other locations. So, you have Dooms, like me? I've got the extinction factor, but I think you got me B. What's your level? You can see them, right? No, but I can sense them. Level 2, then. The fact that Fragile appears to be connected to a BB now further implies that she could in fact be missing some of her Doom's abilities, if not all, and that Sam isn't the only one going through changes in his life. It's time for you to hit the road and start a new journey. A new journey, one that could be reminiscent of the journey of Magellan himself. If you enjoy watching our videos, we'd appreciate if you could show us your support on Patreon. These videos consist of long hours of writing, recording and editing, and with your support on Patreon, you can now help us improve and evolve our channel, allowing us to give you even more videos in a shorter time. In doing so, you'll be able to benefit from exclusive Metal Gear journals, sneak peeks from our upcoming work, 
your name listed at the end of all our videos, early access and many more. Head over to patreon.com forward slash pythonselkin for more. Now, if we had to start from these guards in the back, we don't really know much about them, other than they appear to be robotic looking. If these guards function automatically, then they could very much fit with the description for APAC, which is an automated public assistance company. The word automated describes something that is being operated by machines or computers, without needing any human control, and the word does seem to come close with what we're actually seeing here. Are these guards part of APAC? We don't really know yet, but they do appear right after APAC is mentioned in the trailer. It wasn't the UCA that made the final decision. It was APAC, a private corporation. If these truly are part of APAC, and they appear to be enemies, then what's the APAC logo doing on the Magellan? Could this character have hijacked these guards under his command? Could this be the reason why the trailer asks, should we have connected? And now, onto the one and only. Of course, the word Higgs screams all over this character, starting from Troy Baker's voice, who was singing this version of BB's theme, and as we can also see by these credits, all the way to this guy's seemingly cold attitude. Sound like fun? Of course it does! Now, as most of you may remember, Higgs was stuck on the beach at the end of the first game, which technically means he can't make it to the world of the living, at least not on his own. Technology is making its leaps when it comes to interacting with beaches, and him being stranded there could explain why he now seems to possess a robotic body. A body he might somehow be controlling with his car, his soul, possibly from the beach itself. This enemy's portrayal is somehow reminiscent of combat veteran Cliff Unger, who was beached after his death and who became a dangerous enemy with the abilities he gained from the beach, such as being able to control dead soldiers from across different time periods. This cyborg-like body appears to have its own odd-red-x scanning device, in the shape of an advanced umbilical cord, and he also seems to be giving commands to these guards via his pretty advanced-looking guitar. Once activated, red exclamation marks appear on these guards in the background, reminiscent of the ones in a series which Hideo Kojima is very well known for, that goes by the name of Metal Gear Solid. These can actually be seen better in the character's official poster, here. Could these be artificial organs? We can also see a similar yellowish cover on each of these guards in the background. One thing we should also note before we continue talking about this character, is that beaches only exist for those who have been naturally born. In other words, whatever doesn't have a soul, doesn't have a beach, and the fact that we're now seeing these automated or robotic enemies might be curious to say the least. Could something be happening to all those who have beaches? Food for thought. Now, these particular symbols that are found on the guitar strap appear to be the same symbols from the coffin we saw earlier in the trailer, as well as this insignia, which seems to match the appearance of this statue that is possibly being used to worship the extinction entity. Both of these symbols strongly suggest that this cult, or perhaps order, is truly related to Higgs and the extinction entity, not to mention the emphasis on the color red, which all of them seem to have in her honor. Now we may have seen Higgs going against Emily on several occasions in the first game, but there is proof that this might have been all an act, such as in this particular moment, just before Sam's final fight with Higgs, where we can see Higgs worshipping Amelie on his knees from afar, yet as soon as they notice Sam's arrival, Higgs continues the act. Amelie? In this before the end of everything this shows that deep down Higgs and Emily were still very much on the same side which is why he may be working for her once again in that stranding too in fact the keeper that this character is wearing looks very much like the one Emily used to wear which was gifted to her by Sam as a symbol of their bond could Higgs have somehow connected himself to Sam 
Could this be the reason why he might have access to his memories? Upon closer inspection, and which can be better seen by the official poster, the eyes on his mask are actually reminiscent of ancient Egypt, a theme which Higgs displayed already in the first game. This particular design on his cyborg-like hand is very much the same design found on this guy's hand, as we can see with a brighter image of this scene, which is why we think this villain may be the same character shown at the end of the trailer, potentially being Higgs, or someone from the same group. And one last very important point about this character. Doesn't his hair remind you of... Emily? The fact that Kojima decided to close this scene right when this character is about to reveal his face pretty much means his identity has to remain hidden for now, or that something's not right. Now, if we rewind this scene a couple of seconds back, as soon as he performs that guitar motion, we can actually catch a quick glimpse of this character's ear which does look very much like Higgs's distinctive ears. But why would he now have Amelie's hair, her kipu, and from what they seem to be suggesting, even her face? Something which many fans might have forgotten is that this was teased already in the first game, during this very scene, where Higgs is seen with Amelie's face in one of Sam's nightmares. I need to tell you something. I am the Extinction Entity. Coincidence? We'll leave it for you to decide. What's certain is that Kojima enjoys swapping faces and hiding the identity of his characters in a lot of his games, so it's not something fans should really be shocked by. Then again, it's interesting to see Higgs' character evolve with whatever face he'll be having now. Considering he worshipped her very much like a god during this scene from the first game, could Higgs be trying to reach or perhaps even bring Amelie back to the world of the living? Or is he aspiring to become the successor of the extinction entity himself? Let us know what you think down in the comments. Should we have connected? This question suggests Higgs might be taking advantage of the complete chiral network we made ourselves, and the reason might be, as the first game tells us, is because everyone's beaches would eventually be connected into one. Soon, I will merge them and all mankind's beaches into a single shore. Give me everything I needed, Sam. A complete chiral network spread all across America, connecting all them precious little knots. I got the whole world in the palm of my hand. Well. And for the final scene, we can actually hear a baby from inside the pod, who Sam believes is Louise. But instead of a baby, all we can see is what appears to be an octopus. What first caught our attention is that if those baby sounds truly belong to Lou, she sounds kind of younger than she looked in the trailer's opening moments. She pretty much sounds the same as she did when she was inside the pod, back in the first game. With regards to the octopus, the first thing that comes to mind is that this is, of course, an aquatic creature, very much like the other sea creatures we see on the beach. In fact, most of the battles we had in the first game were BTs that seem to have been manifested from such sea creatures, or even left octopus-like tentacles all over the vehicles at the beach. Now, one of Kojima's recent tweets gave us a better look at this octopus inside the pod, which Kojima seems to call Octopus Lou, and if we slow this down for a few seconds, we can actually see what appears to be the upper side of a baby's head, transforming into the octopus, with an effect that very much resembles this same particle effect on the BTs. Judging by the red light in the background, could this scene actually be set upon Sam returning to the safe house after the attack? Could this same BT-looking entity be the one turning into an octopus? And if this truly is Lou, what can this actually mean? Did Lou's Ka and Ha separate, in a similar fashion to Bridget and Amelie, with her Ha, her body, being the one near Fragile, and her Ka back in the pod? Did she acquire some sort of BT ability that allows her to transform into such a creature? Or could this have been yet another nightmare sequence? Speaking of Louise, remember the little heart symbol on her arm which we mentioned earlier? This same heart appears to be deliberately placed in between the name and surname of actress Elle Fanning, 
one of the new stars in the game, whose character is still pretty much a secret. And if there's one thing everyone should know about Hideo Kojima, is that he sure loves teasing his fans. So this could very well be an early indication of who this actress might be playing. This brings us to the end of our first trailer analysis for Death Stranding 2. We're having a blast analyzing this game, so we highly suggest staying tuned to our channel for a plethora of theories coming your way. Having said that, what are your thoughts on everything we talked about in this video? We'd like to hear your opinions and theories, so make sure to let us know in the comment section down below. We hope you enjoyed this video, and for all things Death Stranding and Hideo Kojima, hit that like button, and make sure to subscribe to our channel. We'll make sure to return a favor with content you won't find anywhere else. Thank you all for watching. Until we meet again, keep on keeping on. Python and Selkin, out.